What are the scientific and legal challenges that you can make to attack forensic evidence in court? The answer to that question is coming right up. Welcome to Gustitis Law. If this is your first visit here, I'm Steve Gustitis, and this is my channel. Our passion here at Gustitis Law is to provide you with weekly videos on how to successfully navigate the criminal justice system, how to manage encounters that you may have with the police, and how to defend criminal charges. So consider subscribing to Gustitis Law by clicking on that capital black and white G down in the lower right hand corner of the video screen. And click on the bell as well as you'll receive notifications whenever a new video is uploaded. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up and share it on your social media platforms. And don't forget I enjoy responding to your questions and your comments, so add those in the comment section below. This video is number two in our series on forensic evidence and how to defend against it in court. In video number one, we define forensic evidence as the intersection of science and the law. Today, we will examine each of these prongs individually as a successful attack upon either will cause the forensic evidence to be excluded from court. Links to other videos in the series can be found down in the description section. The two-step process of admitting forensic evidence into court was established by the United States Supreme Court case of Dalbert v. Merrill Dow Pharmaceuticals. In Dalbert, the court decided that the proponent of the evidence that is, the side of the case trying to get the evidence admitted into court, had the burden of proof to show that the evidence was both reliable and relevant to some issue in the case. So let's start digging in. Proof of reliability is a scientific principle. It has three subparts. If any one of the three subparts is not proven to the satisfaction of the trial court judge, the forensic evidence cannot be admitted into court. Number one, the proponent of the evidence must prove that the underlying scientific theory of the evidence was in fact valid. For instance, if a prosecutor utilizing a professional chemist, wanted to prove blood alcohol concentration in a DWI prosecution, utilizing the, the technology called gas chromatography, they would need to prove that the underlying theory of gas chromatography was valid. Number two, the proponent of the evidence must prove that the technique which applied the scientific theory was in fact valid as well. In our DWI trial example, the prosecutor would need to prove that the procedures and the equipment used by the chemist to determine blood alcohol content were capable of producing a result that would be acceptable to the relevant scientific community. Number three, the proponent must prove that the technique was properly applied in the current case. Taking our DWI trial example again, the prosecutor's chemist would need to prove that they properly utilized the established equipment and procedures to produce the BAC result that they were attempting to admit into court. Now the important thing for us to remember again is if any one of these three subfactors of reliability are not proven to the trial court satisfaction, the forensic evidence cannot be admitted into evidence.
proof of relevancy is a legal principle. Even if the forensic evidence is scientifically reliable, the proponent still must prove to the trial court judge that the evidence is relevant. In other words, the evidence has any tendency to make a fact of consequence more or less probable than it would be without the evidence. That is the legal test of relevancy in court. In our blood test example, a reliable blood alcohol content determined based on the scientific principle of gas chromatography would certainly be relevant in a DWI trial where a fact of consequence would be the level of alcohol in a person's blood. In that particular case, the evidence would probably be admitted into court. The key to using scientific and legal principles to defend against the use of forensic evidence in court is to timely object and to compel the proponent to prove to the trial judge's satisfaction that the evidence is both reliable and relevant. Even if you lose this hearing, you still have preserved these issues for appeal that can be looked at later by a higher court. Do you have any ideas on how to use scientific and legal principles to defend against forensic evidence? If you do, add those down in the comments section and we can begin a discussion that might help other people too. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you next time at Gestatus Law.